a battery factory, this machine makes canisters for electric cells. It's doing a big wartime job. Zinc sheets go in at one end, and after cutting, shaping, and soldering, canisters come out at the other. It makes them by the million, but it does not make enough. Thousands more are made by hand. Even then, there are not enough for civilian needs. The forces need them all. Quick fingers and deft hands solder the canisters and wind the bobbins that go inside them. They make them fast and they make them well. Theirs is the speed that comes from skill. Linked together, the cells become batteries. In portable radio sets, the batteries will link together men fighting in the jungle dependable links that have been forged by the men and women in New Zealand factories. These are New Zealand airmen learning to tie knots, and they're learning stranger things than that. Learning to sail small boats. Whatever their service or their rank, they start this course on the same footing. It's a course in seamanship on New Zealand's strangest air station. are members of the seaplane training flight. Ducks, they call these planes in which they do the next stage of their training. And they look like ducks coming out of the water. Actually, these are walrus amphibians in which these men are training for flying boats and seaplanes. Seaplanes call for seamanship as well as flying skill. Most of the pupils here have already seen operational service on land. to practice takeoffs and landings, an important part of any flying. Difficult enough on land, more difficult on water. These planes aren't pretty, but they're useful, and they've a record of service. They were catapulted off the Achilles, the Ajax, and the Exeter when the Navy bagged the Graf Spey. The Navy calls these ducks maids of all work, and here they prove their versatility again as training planes for pilots of amphibians. The crash launch, always on hand at training operations in case of accidents. This is just another development in the ever-growing Royal New Zealand Air Force. comes this Liberator bomber bringing Mrs. Eleanor Roosevelt on her first visit to New Zealand. To meet her is the Governor-General and other officials. Her visit is a pleasant surprise, but all New Zealand is ready to welcome the distinguished wife of the President of the United States. Mrs. Fraser, representing the Prime Minister, greets Mrs. Roosevelt. Mrs. Roosevelt is here to visit American forces, the American Red Cross, whose uniform she wears, and she will see something of the war work of our women. Before leaving Auckland, she broadcasts to New Zealand. I am very happy to have this opportunity <coughs> of coming to New Zealand. It's a great pleasure for me, and I want to bring my husband's greeting and to say that I know he'd like to be with me, and since he can't be, I'm glad that I was able to come. Waiting for Mrs. Roosevelt in Wellington are batteries of cameramen. She steps out of the train with a smile that pleases them. Mr. Fraser is here to welcome her, but this is no formal reception. Her visit is a personal contribution to our friendship with the United States. Off to Government House. New Zealand is honored to welcome this pleasant personality. In an exclusive interview, Mrs. Roosevelt gave us this message to the women of New Zealand. Many of the women at home would like, I think, to send a message to the women of New Zealand because so many of our boys have been stationed here that they know already how hospitable and kind the women of this country have been.
to the sons and husbands and brothers of the women in the United States. Our men are fighting side by side, and I think the women feel that they also would like to work together, not only to win the war, but in the future to make the world a better place to live in.